Hey, are you dabbling with earned value management and you're trying to use it in Primavera P6? Well, let me help you out. I want to show you a really simple layout to have all the earned value information available to you on screen so that when you are performing earned value metrics and earned value analysis on your P6 project, it's easy. This is a standard layout that I use. Let's go and build it. There are a lot of earned value fields and I want to help you pull out the ones that we need to use. So let's open up kind of, I got a basic layout here, but let's go into our column chooser and have a look at this earned value group. We have so many fields. And now if you're an old hat at earned value, you know the fields that you're looking for, you can pull them out. But if you're just getting started or if you wanna have a standardized layout that you can push to other people in your team so that everybody's looking at the same thing. Here's what I recommend. We're going to pull some basic fields out. Now we're actually not going to start with earned value fields. We actually need to start with percent complete fields because percent complete filters into earned value. As we're progressing, updating percent complete values, those are also driving some of our earned value fields. So the ones that I like to put up are activity percent complete. Let's put that up. And following activity percent complete, I like to put up schedule percent complete. And then I also, this one's really important, performance percent complete. When we're building layouts, one of the things I like to do is sometimes truncate names. So if I have a really long name like performance percent complete, it can get a little bit cumbersome on the screen. So that's where we can highlight it and go edit column. And we can actually shorten this to perf percent complete or something like that. So we can shorten and we can actually rename the fields on screen. Okay, great. So we need these fields, especially performance percent complete because performance percent complete does drive other earned value fields and is part of that whole um, calculation. Now let's go to our earned value fields. So let's go up here to earned value. The first field we want is actually earned value. So it's earned value cost. So let's add that guy in, earned value cost. Now, once again, I'm gonna truncate these for a really nice layout. So I'm gonna click earned value cost, edit it, and I'm just gonna call it EV, just earned value. Great. There are three important fields here, earned value, actual cost, and planned value. So let's grab those guys. So we've got actual cost up here, add him in, and once again, I'm gonna edit and truncate this down to AC. This kind of mirrors what we see in a lot of textbooks. And then let's grab our plan value cost and add that in as well, edit it, and we'll just call it RPV. Oh, look what I did there. I actually did, I was editing this guy. See if I hit column, I'm editing the unit. So one trick is make sure you click in the field that you wanna edit before you try to rename it. Okay, great. PV. Hey, listen, if you're into earned value and you really want to get your hands dirty learning how to use earned value in Primavera P6, then you should really check out my advanced P6 progressing course with earned value. This is a unique course based on real world projects where we do lots of progressing, three months of progressing and evaluating the progress and we're doing earned value as we go through. Not only that, we're gonna cover some more advanced topics like financial periods. I'll show you how to use financial periods and earn value together. Because we have broken this course into modules, there's a full module dedicated to earn value in P6 where we actually go off and use a different project. So we're gonna learn the foundations of earn value in this module and having learned them, then we're gonna bring that knowledge back to our main project and apply that. Not only that, you're gonna learn a little bit about change management, advanced reporting. There's a lot of extra and valuable topics in this course. So if you're really interested, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. Please check it out. Another field that's important here for us is budget at completion. So let's add that one in as well. Budget at completion, click on it, rename it, and we'll call this one BAC. Now, just a quick note, you'll notice that a lot of these earned value fields have two versions of them. For example, there is earned value and then there's earned value labor units. 
and you can use either of those two fields. You would probably use the labor units version of that if you are really focused on tracking your earned value according to your labor. Um, if you have other costs in P6 that are not attributed to labor, that might be material costs, even overhead costs like that, you don't want to just look at those labor unit versions of the fields. You want to look at the, the ones that we've got up here, earned value, AC, PV. That's why we have two, ver two versions. Some of this is legacy stuff from P6 from a while ago. Now, now that we've got our main fields, let's also add our index fields in. So the main index fields we like to look at are schedule performance index. So I'll click it and rename it. Once again, SPI is good enough for us. And let's go up to our cost performance index, CPI, add it in and rename it as well. CPI, great. Okay, lastly, we have our variance fields, cost variance and schedule variance. Once again, add them in and schedule variance, add them in. Okay, let's have a look at how this looks. Click OK. Boom. So I'm just going to kind of shrink some of these columns down, see if I can get it all squeezed onto one page. This looks really good, right? We have a really nice layout. Now, I've got one really interesting little trick for you. If you notice how all this data is kind of crammed together, then I've got a little trick we can space things out. Now check this out. I went into Enterprise, User Defined Fields, and I made a couple of really dummy User Defined Fields. This one is just a, a bar and it's a text field. This one is two bars in a text field. And this one is two equal signs in a text field. These are dummy fields. I'm never actually gonna put data in them, but watch what we can do with our layout. Once again, in my column chooser, if I expand my user defined and I add that guy in, I can actually use these as dividers to kind of divide up my screen a little bit. And let me add them in and I'll show you what that can look like. Add a little bit of division between the types of data that we're looking at so I have one divider that looks at my date stuff off to the left. I then have my percent complete stuff in the middle. I've added another divider for all my cost, earned value fields in the middle, and then the SPI, CPI indexes and variance fields at the end. So these little dividers can really help you spread the data out and make it easier to read. And that's important when you have so much data on screen. So the layout that we've built here is actually the layout that I use in my advanced P6 progress scene course. Check it out, but feel free to build this and use this, propagate this to your team. This is a valuable layout. This is how we should be looking at the data. If you got value from this video, please like it. It helps us get seen with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel. We're making lots of project controls oriented video all the time. I'm Michael from Plan Academy. Happy planning. If you liked and got lots of value from this course, hey, if you like this course, it helps us out a lot. <laughs> all right. If you got, if you want more videos like this all the time, and okay, let me try that again.